Okay guys, so we're going to go through a full guide on the Furin FRS. Um, there is an older version of this, so if you're watching this video and the version that you have looks slightly different, I'll leave a link to the older version of the video in the description. So, uh, first things first with the button layout, so I'll just go through the basic um, button layout on any standard FRS. Obviously, there are so many different layout choices that yours could look completely different, but as a general rule, up, down, left and right, if you have four here, um, light punch, medium punch, heavy punch, light kick, medium kick, heavy kick, and your extra buttons. Um, so on a PlayStation, for example, that would be square, triangle, R1, L1, X, circle, R2, and L2. And then your thumb button, in some cases, will be jump, and in some cases will be L1, but we'll talk about that in more detail later, depending on your layout. Then across the top, we have the start buttons, which will go in order, start, select, home, touchpad, L3, and R3, which on a PlayStation will be options share playstation button touchpad l3 and r3 on the front of the case you'll need a little a pen or something to flick the switch it's not you're not able to hit it with your thumb by accident this switch here will change which one of the um, up buttons is active so you can't have two up buttons active in most tournament rules so in this case we have a up on our left hand side here is WASD layout. So with the, in this configuration, this button will actually be L1 and this button won't do anything. And then when I flick it over, the up will no longer work. This will be up and L1 will return to being L1. Uh, there are variations to this depending on what layout you have. Um, if you have four directions on the left hand side and only eight buttons on the right, you might need slightly different um, layout, but we'll talk about that when we get into the wiring section. All the buttons and the caps can be removed. You can just do those by hand. I usually use something just to lift off the caps. They won't flick off by accident. Uh, they are on there pretty tight, but you can remove them just by hand. And then the switches themselves are all hot swappable. So if you use a little flathead screwdriver that on the left and the right hand side, you can loosen them just by lifting up and remove all of the switches. If you're changing your switches, just make sure that the pins underneath, you probably can't see them very well here, but make sure that these pins are straight. If they're bent slightly, then there's a good chance that when you push it back in, the pin will not go into the connector that it needs to and the button won't work. So just make sure that that's straight when you put it back in. And to push them back in, just literally push in with your finger, put the cap back on. The same is true, obviously, for all of the buttons and the keys as well. So if you're changing uh, button caps or switches, that's how you change them. The USB cable is removable and just plugs in the back here. For using your FRS on a PC, when you plug in the USB cable, just make sure that you're using the uh, PC mode. The, the Brook PCBs that are in all the Furin FRS do automatically detect on PC, but in order to get the best um, version of the software, it's usually best to hold down a button when you plug um, your controller in. I'll put on the screen now which uh, buttons do which, but in general, your three punch or heavy punch button, in this case R1, will do Xbox 360 mode, which is usually best for PC. Although if you use uh, medium punch or the triangle button in this case, as you plug in, this will give you the PS4 mode, which has a faster um, kind of response time on the PCB. So that might be something that you want to use. It's definitely better to pick one of these manually rather than going with automatic and I'll leave that up on the screen so you can see what the options are okay so now we're going to talk a in a little bit more detail about modifying the FRS if you're wanting to change button layouts and stuff like that so you'll notice that there are nine um, screws around the outside of the case. Not all of them need to come off when you're changing things, so we'll go through um, that now. If we're wanting to change the full layout, 
we actually we only need five screws the left two the rightmost two and the center one so i'll take those out and then show you how to change the layout from there so once we have those um bolts taken out the entire top layout will lift up and we'll want to unplug the um wiring harnesses that are underneath i'll show you those in a moment but i'll unplug the three of those and you'll notice that the the entire layout stays together as long as these four bolts are in place so we have an entire layout here a left and a right side that are separate and if we were just changing to another layout we would take our another our next uh, full layout and we plug in these cables here so there are three different cables each looks slightly different um, this 10 pin harness here that has all of the wires across here that that will be for your action buttons which will plug in here the 10 pin harness here that has two wires missing in the middle little gap in the middle that's for your start buttons and that'll be located here and your five pin harness will be your directions which will be located here um, obviously your layouts will change but that they will uh, still be in the same place in terms of where the harness goes so plugging those in if I just show you an example when we plug these in the harnesses will have to go in this way so that the pins that you can see here are facing down if you plug them in facing this way um, the, the power won't work so plugging those in we can do those here And then just put our panel down into place and then replace the five bolts and our layout has changed if we're changing the artwork we will also need to take off these four the plexi will lift up you can put your new artwork on and then put the plexi back down and put these bolts in place for these ones they are slightly different to the other bolts that you've taken out and will be shorter so just make sure that whichever ones you take out, they go back in the correct place. So let's take a look at the inside of the FRS now. We'll remove our top panel. And the newer version of the FRS will look something like this on the inside. If yours looks different to this, like I said earlier, you might want to go back to the older version of the video. The link will be in the description. So in the bottom corner here, we have our uh, PCB, which in most cases is going to be a Brook uh, PCB of some sort. And to remove this, we just have two screws here, which will take the same um, Allen key as the bolts once we've got those two out we would unplug the touchpad wire here and then we can just lift up the PCB now the newer version of the e and FRS comes with a breakout board here which your Brook PCBs will just plug into so all Brook PCBs, as far as I'm aware, will just plug straight into this. There's no need to wire up using the connectors here, and everything will be already pre-wired for you. The only thing that's um, in addition to that is the switcher, but again, that will be wired for you already. So if you're wanting to change your PCB, it's as simple as taking that out, putting your next one on, and just pushing it so that the 20-pin connector and the 4-pin connector here attach to these this will be the case for most um fighting game sort of pcbs out there it will certainly be the case for all the brook boards if you have a an eight button layout on your right hand side and four or uh, direction buttons on your left uh, fight stick for example or a wasd on your left and you're wanting 
the um, button layout to work for that, one thing we'll need to change here. So this is for options that do not have a thumb button. If we don't have that thumb button, all we're gonna do is take this top right wire here out from the switcher and just place it into the bottom right connector here and screw that in place. That will mean that your L1 button will always stay as your L1 and your uh, directions will always be on the left hand side. The only other thing that might uh, be something you need to change is the USB port here, which you might at some point replace. That's as simple as four uh, screws here that will remove uh, the USB from the breakout board and obviously the two screws here, but that should be fairly straightforward. So let's put your Brook board back in. It's simple as pushing down onto those connectors and putting your two screws back in place. And lastly, if we're changing our button layout and we're only changing one side at a time, what we would do is just take off the two additional screws here. If we're changing the right hand side, for example, And the panel will come off separately. We don't need to worry about any of the screws and stuff that are here because that's all for these connections. And if we, let's say we're changing that over to a different layout, we could just line that back up, place it into our case, line everything up, and then put all the bolts back in. And the next thing we're going to talk about is adding one of the fight stick add-on modules to the Furin FRS. Um, so this will come as a complete um, button layout where the parts are available separately. When you order a complete um, add-on kit, it will come with a spacer for the case that will allow for the extra space needed for the Samoir JLF that's inside. And we'll go through how to add those in now. It's a pretty simple. Uh, button layout change almost exactly the same as changing any of the other layouts. So first we need to remove these five bolts. And then we would remove our top panel, the same as we have done earlier. Unplug the three harnesses that are on the inside. Then we'll take our fight stick add-on, which will have this little adapter wire for the Samoir JLF. That will plug into the direction harness that's here, but otherwise it's the same. So we would plug in our three wire harnesses here. And the last one would go onto that adapter. And then we'll place that down into the case. There will be a little bit of movement as you put this back in. This is to make sure that you can line it up correctly. So we get that lined up correctly. And then we will need slightly longer bolts now for the case, which will be included in your fight stick add-on kit, which I'll add now. So to add those four bolts in, you'll notice that they are longer than the ones needed for the um, levelless layouts of the FRS, but they do still go in exactly the same place. So we would just make sure that we use our fingers in the corners here to line up the case, and then we can screw that down. And now we have a Furin FRS with a Samoir JLF joystick added on. Okay, so now we've talked about how to add the uh, fight stick add-on. I'm just going to change our layout back 
uh, and just make sure that we've covered everything. So once we've taken the bolts off, we can lift up the spacer and the uh, top layout, unplug our three wiring connectors, remove our old layout, and then I'm gonna place a new layout on top entirely, which is my personal layout. So to recap, the three connectors underneath, and then slot the layout down into the case. Everything should line up. And then we'll take our original bolts, the shorter ones, and put those back in place. Okay, so that should be basically everything you need to know. We've gone through changing the button layouts, how the button configuration works, the hot swappable switches, caps, and all the internal wiring, as well as adding a fight stick module to the top. And like I said, there will be a link to the older version of this instruction video in the description down below. If you have any questions about anything to do with the Fury and FRS, feel free to drop those in the comments below and I'll get back to them as best I can. But in the meantime, that should be everything you need to know about your Furin FRS.